to quote a hit song from the year 2003, Tell me, how was I supposed to know that we were both related? Believe me, if I knew she was my cousin, we never would have dated. I'm, of course, talking about Weird Al's, Weirdo Yankovic's, a complicated song from 2003 Poodle Hat album. But uh, we're not talking about that record today. We're talking about Let Go by Avril Lavigne, which I have never heard, and you have. Yeah, I owned the CD as a late, in my late teen. I think I was like 19 when this came out. 2002, mm-hmm. which means it's 20 years old. It's 20 years old this year. There's a 20-year edition of this album that you can listen to mm. um, with... Some songs that are not that interesting, with one exception. Couple, couple bonus tracks, not a lot. Yeah, there's like four or five. There's a couple soundtrack songs. Um, I think the one of note is Breakaway, which if that sounds like a title you know, yes, it is the Kelly Clarkson song Breakaway. Mm. Uh, Avril Lavigne co-wrote this entire album, Let Go. Breakaway was originally written for it and then given to Kelly Clarkson. If anything, I would listen to it if you're familiar with Breakaway by Kelly Clarkson just because of how bizarre of a rendition. It's faster. <laughs> it's weirdly, it's a lot worse. So good job, Kelly and your team. <laughs> you improved it a lot. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm i not familiar with the Kelly Clarkson one. Uh, and I did not listen to the 20th anniversary edition. I kept it kept just it standard edition. 20, Yeah. This, I mean, this is that's the real. Yeah, they just, throw on, to, they just throw on some songs to be like, yes, oh, here's the new yeah, edition. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I wanted to take it in as it was in 2002. I, I put it in my CD player. No, you didn't. No, I listened to it on Spotify. You saw the blurry cover. Yeah, yeah, very of its time that cover, and that sort of is in my notes a lot. Like as far as production trends. Or other little, you know, oh yeah, these are how snares sounded back then. Or this is, yeah, there was a lot of like mid-tempo ballady choruses back then that sounded like this. Very of its time record, I mm-hmm. thought. Yeah, for sure. Um, at least in, especially in the first part of the record, I'd yeah. say more so than the last It's a, kind of, a, I would think, a front-loaded record. Mm-hmm. I think they gave it the old SNL treatment. Lauren Michaels always says, you know, put the best sketches first and then the the ones that are bad are airing at like 1 a.m., you know, when everyone's like half asleep. But, uh, but, you know, losing grip, complicated skater boy, I'm with you. I feel like it's a little front loaded of an album. I think it's front loaded in the sense of like the style of songs. I do like some songs in the back half. Um, I just think it's a different it's like a second act. Maybe not worse yeah. to me, but just different. And the back half is uh, is more mid tempo, with mm-hmm. the exception of um, we'll no, get there. nobody's fool. Which um, <laughs> okay, let's I, go. Let's start out with. Let's get into the tracks. Uh, start before off. wait before oh, that, I okay. feel like I should give context to what I have heard, what I do know. I'm not going to be one of these people on YouTube that acts like they've never heard "Happy Birthday" before. They've never been exposed to music in their lives. First time hearing music reaction. No, I've heard Complicated, obviously. Obviously, I've heard that song. I've heard Skater Boy could maybe, like, kind of, I could I could make out the chorus, you know? I've heard the chorus. It's, like, on in the background when I'm a teen, or it's on in the background while I'm shopping now in a grocery store. Uh, beyond that, haven't heard any of this record before ever, until today, and haven't really heard any of her other discography, except maybe that boyfriend song yeah there's probably some songs you've heard that you don't realize but that that was yeah. i think maybe her biggest hit which one uh the boyfriend yeah yeah that was or, everywhere no, uh, my happy ending that might have been it you probably know anyway let's move on to this album okay okay losing grip sounds a little alanis morissette to me which is kind of cool and instantly establishes something she's going to do a lot vocally throughout this album, which is like, you know, a, 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 yeah, that's a tick of hers for sure. Yeah. It happens a lot. I, I guess I don't mind it. You know, everyone's got vocal signatures and, you know, different things that they do. I mean, 
you know, picture your favorite singer. What's that one thing they always do? You, you can pick it out. And this definitely seems like hers. If a, a line ends in I, and like, I, 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 you know, mm-hmm. like a lot of that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but losing grip, solid opener, I thought. It's fine. It's not a standout to me. I kind of, I don't really agree that it should be the opener, but um, it's fine. Yeah. It's a little like, it's a little like the weird rock sound of the time that yeah. feels dated. You it know? did feel dated. You got this like, yeah, this, this song was like this clash of like the Alanis Morissette kind of sound clashing with like, yeah, the mid-tempo rock sound of the time. Almost like, this is going to sound worse than I mean it. But, you know, say a band like Three Doors Down or something, you know how they all, their songs aren't like fast, really. They're just like, yeah, rock, mid tempo, mm-hmm. blah, blah. Like that yeah. sort of seeps into this record more than I would have expected. Mm-hmm. I thought the record was going to sound like Skater Boy. Which is very much an anomaly, I believe, on the record. Um, you know, we so we go straight from Losing Grip, we go right into the... the um, the two big singles, yeah. which is Complicated and Skater Boy. Uh, how do you feel about Complicated? It's just, yeah, it's I don't, out there. It's a, it's a well-known song. Super catchy chorus. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a really strong pop chorus. Mm-hmm. Um, I did not remember like what the rest of the song sounded like, but it also establishes something that's going to happen a lot in this record, which is like these weird smash mouth style, like fricka, 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 Right like, before yeah. she starts singing. Mm-hmm. It's really weird. It doesn't happen other times in the songs, but it's usually before like the first and second verse where there'll be like this like really phony sounding record scratch. Um, like not record scratch, like, but like, you know, like scratching mm-hmm. um, right before she starts singing. And it's very weird and also of its time, maybe even a little late on that. Yeah. So a lot of this album... She had worked with different songwriters. The The hits were, um, the singles were mostly co-written by The Matrix and produced. The Matrix, right. Uh, Not the movie. Production. Not Keanu. <laughs> production duo, I think. I don't, yeah, I actually don't even know. A lot of production duos behind pop hits at that time. You got basically The Matrix and The Neptunes going head to head for a couple years. The Matrix was behind a lot of hits from... Britney did like Shakira songs and and so were the Neptunes. They were working with the same sort of artists. Um, Neptune stuff always had more of like a drum machine feel. Matrix stuff had more of this kind of feel. So yeah, complicated. I don't really have much to say about, but yeah, I do have a lot to say good. about Skater Boy. Skater Boy is bad. Okay, let's get into it. What's going on in this song? Okay, I'm trying to follow the story, right? This is your new Romeo and Juliet. Forget the Copulets and the... Capulets and the Montagues? Yeah, yeah, forget that. It's it's the skater guys and the, um, I guess, just girl. Just a girl. A like girl. Like a popular girl, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, yeah. So she doesn't get with this guy, right? She doesn't get with this guy. Bad move. Smash cut to later in life and she's raising a kid alone. That was quick. Yeah, this is so weird. And like, is it saying like, oh, she's like a single mom, so that like that sucks she's or that's sad bad? And alone in the, and and meanwhile, Avril slash protagonist is with the skater boy at the and the skater boy is playing a big show, and so Avril slash protagonist wins. Okay, I want to talk about this song a little bit. In thing, something I thought of when I was listening to it. Okay, this time. Um, and it's that, okay, first of all, this is sort of like a proto, like Taylor Swift, you belong with me, which mm. is the like, I'm the outcast girl and I don't wear that. And the boy likes her, but sh- he should be with me, yeah. which is totally fine. Like, especially these are teenagers writing these songs. This is totally like a narrative that people connect to. And especially back then. Yeah. Also very of its time. But then I was thinking, but this song is about the boy. It's not about the the girl in the song. Like yeah, the yeah. girl who gets with him is not at all the main character in this yeah. song. It flips it and somehow still manages to be weird and problematic. Well, but because then it's like the girl like 
let's just say Avril, Avril is cooler because she saw, you know, she saw what the guy is worth. Sure. That's a worthy like thing to write about, but then it's like, she wins because like she gets to like go to the concert. Okay. First of all, like having any accomplishments of her own. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Her, her worth is that she's with rocker guy who gets to be on MTV which is the He's pinnacle, I guess. Up MTV. And and let's just say that, of course, no rocker guy on MTV has ever turned out to be bad, ever. That's never happened. They're all great, and they've never done anything wrong. And then, you know, of course, then Avril marries it's a guy inter- just like that, and then they get divorced. Oh, some 41 saw, guy? Yeah, Derek Webley. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that you think that the... That the the, when the pers- perspective switch happens, that it's Avril, because there's a it switches to like you're like talking about this other girl, and then it switches to like I'm I'm at the show with this guy, and you're not. I mean, it was she's always. Do they know each she's other? She's always. It, I figured it was kind of a thing. Like they go to high school together. Um, so they have a history. They knew each other. Yeah. Maybe they shared a locker and talked about the guy. I don't think guy. we need to go this deep into the lore. I just well, it's it weird. As, like, it's it is really weird. weird. The song is super bizarre. I listened to it twice before going forward. Uh, it's just narratively a bizarre song, mm-hmm. and it's it's yeah weird to suggest that yeah she like yeah she got the the crappy hand in life because. She, she has a baby and is at home. It's really weird. I mean, she could be ma- happily married at home with a baby, but like... Yeah, in, Avril doesn't in know. In Avril's perspective, it's cooler to be at the Why don't you reach rock. out to your old friend and yeah. invite her to the show? I mean, this is just... It's a whole part of the like girl against girl narrative that like was so perpetuated at this time, which we've talked about before, and unhealthy. Yeah. But also she's like 15, 16 writing this album. So like... It's the same thing with with misery business, you know. I get, you know, I guess I'll give this sixteen year old from two thousand two a pass. I guess so. Let's move on. Yeah, I'm with a you. A little more swiftly. <laughs> that song has the most to talk about for sure. I'm with you. Uh, I'd say also strong pop chorus. I actually love this song. This was like that. You know, love or loved, love. I do think I still love it just for the nostalgia factor too. Okay. Um, but I do think it's a solid song all around. I think, um, you know, I was a little old to be like relating to some of the stuff at this stuff as much as I did, but also like I was very single as a teen. Mm. And so this song was like, yeah, like, where's the guy? <laughs> So, you know, it's like, it's a little sappy, like you can self wallow a little bit when you sing this song yeah. in your car. <laughs> it, it is wallowy. And it's for anthemic, sure. so you can just like really. The, the lyrics in this song reminded me of like when a kid is upset and they like run to their room and slam the bedroom door. Like, don't, don't, don't even try to come in and try to make me feel better and try to make me come out. Don't even, <laughs> don't even. Like, you know, it felt kind of like that. Yeah, I mean, all the lyrics do. It's funny that, so there's like some dispute between like the Matrix and Avril about like how much of the songs that she actually wrote and they try and take credit. I'm like, these are clearly written by a teen girl. Yeah. Clearly. Yeah, come on. And not in a bad way, just like clearly a teen girl. Mobile or mobile? Mobile. Mobile. I don't like this. There's country twang, and I kind of thought I had this album figured out. I thought, yeah. oh, I, I mm-hmm. understand the pattern here. You got sort of mid-tempo rock, you got the, the faster pop hits, and you got the ballads. Mm-hmm. I kind of, I, I know the palette, okay? I know what's coming. Mobile comes, and I'm like, what's going on here? Now she's sort of singing country-ish, yeah. but only on like a couple of words. Yeah, a little, like, another short, like, foray into context. Okay. I'm trying not to go too deep. Um, So, basically, Avril, like, she was getting shopped around and, like, had a manager and all this stuff. And early on in her career, she was being, working with songwriters and, like, sort of, they said, going with, like, a Faith Hill vibe, which is, like, yeah, what was 16-year-old Faith Hill? Like, that makes sense. 
sense somehow in 2002. Sure. I don't know. But she did grow up like singing country music. And um, and so I think maybe some of these are remnants from like pre-Matrix songwriting sessions. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and I really like, it didn't really click with me before you know, in years previous. But then when you mentioned, when I told you that you were like, Oh, that makes this all make sense. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it, it, there's a lot of country influence, pop country influence in this. Yeah. It, it appears now and again, but, mm-hmm. but heavily in this song. Um, I, it's not my thing. Don't like it. Moving on to unwanted. Uh, so, okay. Unwanted's weird because the little like sound in the beginning, not, I wouldn't mm-hmm. call it like the intro of the song, but there's just this little like sample thing th- that starts the song. It sounds like it's from rock steady by no doubt. Oh really? I didn't notice. Yeah. There's like this little thing that starts the song and it sounds very rock steady ish to me. Mm, I'm like, I Oh, think, is it okay, going to be yeah. that kind of song? And then instantly it's that, no, it's that like mid tempo rock thing again. Yeah. It was funny too. Cause then I was listening to this and I thought I'm starting to understand I never really understood why she got with Chad Kroger. And I'm like, I get it now. She's probably into that music. <laughs> like, they're both Canadian a little bit, but you can't, like, say, oh, that's they're the criteria. both Canadian, so they have to like each other. No, that's the criteria. Both Canadian, both have mid-tempo rock songs. Boom. But that's how you get together. it a little bit like nickelback Classic love story. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't a skater boy, but it still worked out for a while. He could skate. Could he? I don't know. Does Me that either. does the hair? Do you risk well, the like, hair getting caught in the wheels? He's not a skater boy. He's yeah, not wearing yeah. the boi. Stuff. Yeah, boi. Yeah, no, he's a rocker boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, yeah, that's that's when I noticed. Yeah, snares sounded like this mm-hmm. back then. Drums were produced this way back then. I know that's geeky and probably uh, very uninteresting. But I noticed production trends and, um, and yeah, a lot of the production of this record is, oh yeah, yeah, stuff did sound like this. The faster stuff ha- always has that like, <laughs> like everything's kind of sounded like that back then. Yeah. I found the transition from Unwanted to Tomorrow very jarring personally. <laughs> mm, yeah. You know, at this time, this was like a total dip for me. Um, so I was just kind of taking notes and... And moving on to the next, I, I it was kind of losing me here, mm-hmm. okay? You want my honest first reaction of Avril? It was starting to lose me here. Anything but ordinary. Lyrics. Let's talk about lyrics. This is the lyric that you're saying is the worst lyric? Oh, no, we'll get to oh, that. We'll get, it oh, involves, later. Oh, later. It, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that, we'll get to that. No, but this is also bad. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I get so weird, I freak myself out. That was, to me, contender for, like, you were going to say that was the worst lyric. Lyrics it's pretty bad. straight from the scribblings on a middle schooler's desk. Yeah, again, and it's, it's age appropriate. Um, I, it's very like, I'm 15 and this is edgy. Yeah. Like, she's like, I'm so like moody and like, no one understands me. It's kind of the, I'm so random of the time. Yeah. So random. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just so weird. Sometimes I freak myself out. That's how weird I am. Yeah. But I've, you know, I've been there. I've been there. Sometimes you get so weird, you freak yourself out. I just like, that seems like something I would have written in my little sure. journal. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, um, things I'll never say. I wrote, ah, no complaints. Fine song. Sing songy song. It's cute. It's a cute yeah. sort of country pop song. Yeah. I feel like if a country singer had this song, it would feel totally natural. Yeah. Um, I do. I like this song. I like it. It's that one's it's fine. good, yeah. And I have no ill will towards the song, especially mm-hmm. because what follows is my world. My world. Let's talk about this line. Got fired by a fried chicken ass. <laughs> what? <laughs> Got fired by a fried chicken ass. It's her boss at the fried chicken place. Is, is, can we say that? Is Are we going to get like... Are we going to get docked by YouTube for saying? (laughs) Don't care. This needs to be discussed. Got (laughs) fired by a fried chicken ass. 
Okay, I get it. I understand she's saying I worked at a fried chicken place and the boss was an ass and then also he fired me. Weird way to write that line, though. There's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of that awkward, like, um, where you're just trying to make the line work in a really, like, sweaty way. It's a lot to say in one line. Yeah. Why not, like, you know, just strip it down to, like, got fired by an an ass? Or just, like, got fired from my fast food job, you know, say that in or like, my, make yeah, my boss was an ass or something got fired by a fried chicken ass should have been the name of the record <laughs> fried chicken ass. Just that should have been the name of the record. Yeah. Good job. Avril should have led with Memorable. this song. Um, that's all I wrote down for I this think, song. I wrote, like, I don't know if this is, if this is anywhere correct, but like maybe springsteen type of like guitar. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, a there? little bit, a little it's bit. Like the, the guitars are, I kind of like it. And then the song sucks. So. I had whiplash from, from the fried chicken ass line. And the, the rest of the song was a blur to me. I was, <laughs> I was trying to regain my surroundings, maybe have some water. Yeah. Take a breath. It's like, yeah, it's not, it's not great. Not great. It's not great. It's well, the song in it as a whole. Okay. Yeah. I'm just saying, but that I'm, uh, I'm amused. You find that line so objectionable. I always kind of just like glazed right over it in my Were kids connecting lessons. with that at home there. Their <laughs> CD player like got fired by fried okay, chicken. Let's ass. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> no. Okay. Nobody's fool. Yeah, I mean, it can't get any worse than that line, right? Nobody's fool comes on, and now she's like rapping. She in the verses, she's rapping. She's rapping like Anna Gasteyer raps in that skit with Will Ferrell, where they like sing to like senior center people, or no, they're like the it's like to, to high schoolers to get them not to oh. do drugs. At the school assembly. That's how she's rapping. That skit has a name, but I've long forgotten. It's very good, though. Yeah, you know very the one. Good. I think it's on the it's Best on of the, Will Ferrell it's DVD. You find it on TikTok, I'm sure. <laughs> so uh, that's weird. And also weird to introduce that element like so late into the album. Mm-hmm. I would say, you know, knowing that there's other songs that were cut that are now on this 20 year anniversary thing. Hey, cut the rapping and maybe put a different song in there. Yeah, well, also just like it kind of bothers me because I think there's potential with the chorus of this song. I think it could be a really cool song. I don't think the chorus like really goes where it could. I like the singing on the chorus and and I think it starts out nice and I just think the production team failed Maybe have a, on this. Yeah, yeah. And also... You know, the scratching, the like work of work that I was talking about that happens all the time before she starts singing. Now, this time it says something. It's a scratch of a sample of uh, someone saying step up. Oh, so yeah. She's, she's going to step up to the mic and spit some bars. Should have had a guest feature. Maybe yeah. have Mike Shinoda or, or whatever from Linkin Park come in and do his I'm going to rap a little here. And he could he could rap that, and then she could sing the chorus. There's a hit. You know, I mean, based on the premise of the song, she's such a world weary, seventeen year old yeah. that she really needed to like speak for her own. Because she refers to like being fourteen in the song and being like, "It's amazing what a couple years you learn." Like, I'm I'm so much hey, gr- more grown up now. You know, I'll give her credit because if I put out like a rap that I wrote when I was like 16 (laughs) or something and the world could still just hop on Spotify and listen to it. And then I can talk Mm -hmm. about it on YouTube and be like, guess what? This is bad from 20 years ago. That would suck. I thought about that a lot in this album. Like, uh, you know, she could have had some people helping her with the lyrics. Maybe she was more insistent. Like you're going to use my lyrics Mm. and, for her age, like, again, this is totally appropriate writing, and I feel for her, too. Like, yeah, like, people are going to come out later and be like, your lyrics are so dumb. Like, well, what did, what did you do when you were 17? Especially if you don't have the context, you know? it's got You kind of have to remind yourself how young she was. Mm-hmm. But, hey, I'm. this is a critique. This is the first, my, my first time critique, okay? I'm being honest here. Too much to ask is the song that's next. Um, what did I write? 
Uh, she thought she was cool. She she thought he was cool. Oh, oh and then he cho- chose weed over he chose weed over me. So she she thought this guy was cool. Uh-huh. And then guess what? He does a really uncool thing and he chooses weed over her. She's like in she like when I was reading a little on Wikipedia, she was like hanging out with the skate kids and that's like what Made yeah, but she support. like probably like wore her dare t shirt to hang out with the skate kids and oh, like was kind of like dare ironic. T-shirt, you definitely are doing yeah. <laughs> doing fun drugs. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's funny. It's funny. Um, I what did I say? I think if the lyrics had been brushed up a little bit, someone helped her out. I stripped on the production. This could be a super good pop song. Mm. Um, and I really think Kelly Clarkson again could have taken this song and ran with it. I think it would have been a really <laughs> great Kelly Clarkson song. Not that Avril couldn't have done it too, but I just, I just, I just hear it on like, okay. just like a main pop girl type of song. Um, can you picture Kelly Clarkson talking about how the guy chose weed over her? Well, that's where the lyric brush up takes up. Uh, she they thought did he was cool. Okay. Okay. Naked. The closing the track. The closing track. Some interesting production. Uh, strong chorus for this kind of record mm-hmm. is what I wrote down. And um, that brings us to the end. Mm-hmm. Um, at this point, you know, we're only like a couple songs uh, away from the fried chicken thing. So I'm still like in my head, yeah, just kind of like flash. trying to work that out in my mind, come to terms with it, mm-hmm. that I now have heard this and know that it exists. Mm-hmm. I screenshotted the lyric and sent it to friends. <laughs> 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 I said, check this, this is- out. <laughs> uh, let me get my word in, which is basically just similar. Good song. Naked's good. Yeah, good. It's a good song. I just think it shows some... Um, more emotional maturity than the lyrics of some of the other songs. And I think it's a good step. And, uh, I say there's some nostalgia goggles on this album. I like it. Um, but track by track, it's a little, (laughs) yeah, this is a no nostalgia goggles zone. Yeah. Well, you can't really like get away from it if sometimes, but just looking, trying to look at it, as objectively as possible and like having not really listened to it, like hardly at all in a really long time. Um, it's weird that this album actually did as well as it did. (laughs) It's yeah, I agree. It's odd that it was a hit record. Obviously it was the strength of the singles singles were, were good choices. And it just goes to show, like I've mentioned before, I think in the last like multiple videos, um, single choice, is is such an important skill set you know and who knows if it's like her pushing the singles or the label deciding the singles you never really know but man it can just make or break an entire cycle and and there used to be kind of a trend you know especially in the pop punk genre not that i would call this record pop punk Mm -hmm. but adjacent Mm -hmm. where it's like you know you got your one two punch of like fast fast pop punky punky stuff and then you hit it with the ballad that's the third one Mm -hmm. and it would just be like those three Mm -hmm. and that was such a trend with like you know the blink and all that all those albums back then so it seems like they took that route and it paid off Mm -hmm. yeah they they came in with complicated really accessible then skater boy i mean again referencing like the song you belong with me people latch on to those narrative songs. People really like when there's a song with a little story in it and the video has the story in it and it's cute. And oh, did the video have the story? I think it had somewhat I'd of it. I'd love yeah. to see what the titular skater boy looked like in the video. I wonder, um, I could be remembering wrong. Maybe, well, maybe I think we'll I remember, I feel like I remember her in like a green t-shirt and maybe yeah. still rocking like the tie thing that she, she did. She did the tie like this whole album cycle. That was the the yeah. thing of the era. Yeah, and then she was kind of like, eh, I'm done. Well, it was like a tank top tank with the tie. Complicated was the tank top tie and like the baggy pants. The marketing is odd. You know, I know we're... we're Th- this we're, is, we should have ended already, but it's a You know hard. what? <laughs> People can stop watching if they want. I want to talk about the marketing and, and the image and the sort of the identity crisis 
of the look and marketing of this record. And I think that's what maybe caused a lot of the negative, um, you know, at least when I was a kid uh, and this record was coming out, I was very aware of the negative feedback from this album. The, like the, the narrative that she's a poser. Poser, she's a po- yeah, that was thrown around a lot, especially because of the Skater Boy video. It was, that she was a poser, or just that like she wasn't actually cool, like she was dressing like that, but she yeah. was like singing pop music, exactly. But, like that, she like everyone like sort of presumptuously assumed like she thinks she's punk rock. Well, guess what? You're not. You know? Yeah, she was doing like whatever. You can skate and listen and like. Enjoy Shania Twain, which was like a thing that she grew up with, you know? Of course, now we know in 2022 that genre just doesn't mean anything. And these sort of like genre wars were very stupid. And, um, you know, the whole like Limp Biscuit versus Britney Spears of the like VMA era. No, like Christina, because remember she sang with Limp Biscuit? Okay, yeah, yeah, whatever. But like that whole thing mm-hmm. is stupid. And obviously we know that now. So looking back, yeah, maybe it was a, uh, there was sort of, like I said, this identity crisis with mm-hmm. the marketing and look of this album and the videos. But it, come on, it's, the genre doesn't matter anymore. I mean, it was the same with the whole production of it because she was getting told to be country and then she was like, but I like, I my friends are, are skaters and I like this music now. Mm-hmm. And so it was really like, yeah, the, it, the whole album is an identity crisis. And later on, I haven't listened to much of her stuff, but like later on, she really goes, I think, acoustic. And, Interesting, okay. Um, she does some like different kinds of genres and, and, you know, that's very much allowed and encouraged in most cases. But for some reason with her, it was kind of like she was so young and people just wanted people at that time. They just wanted to like bash on, especially a girl in, in the punk, in the punk pop scene, which was just not a thing, really. Yeah. And um, the whole poser thing was, st- it was just that word was thrown around nonstop when, when I was a kid and, and it was, you know, 2002, 2003, you couldn't be a poser. Anything you did, you had to be like, oh man, am I going to be called a poser? If I mm-hmm. have studs on my belt, am I going to be called a poser? And be, yeah. You don't even read Thrasher magazine, dude. People assumed that like the label made her into this, but she was the one who, who pushed that identity. That was who she really was. Okay. And they were trying to make her into you know, into Leanne Rhymes. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's wrap it up. Yeah. T- l- l- discuss in the comments, please discuss all of this, but particularly I want your thoughts on, I got fired by a fried chicken ass. What is it? <laughs> what's, what's the lyric? What's the craziest lyric on this album? Wow, somehow I thought I was, like, doing it worse. But no, that's the line. Got fired by a fried chicken ass. Okay. Yeah, I mostly would just want to hear about that. If you can tell me, like, where you're going to get that tattooed on your body. And, um, yeah. If there's a worse lyric, please tell me. Also, this is kind of a new thing for us. You know, we haven't, like, dipped back to an old album. If you're new to this channel, we're usually talking new music. So, is this sort of thing you'd like to see because there's plenty of albums we can dip back into and particularly keep this fun little thing going where one of us has heard the album and one of us hasn't yeah yeah that because we didn't con- our taste did not converge too much at in the early 2000s i don't think yeah yeah not that we knew each other back then but yeah tastes definitely weren't meshing so Maybe it's your turn next time. There's something I'm super familiar with from back then that you've never heard. Ooh. I can subject you to. Mm. And then we could talk about that. Tell us what you think in the comments if you're still around 34 minutes later. And if you are, oh man, bless you. You've Have been, a good one. You made it through the long haul. I also realized we never did the intro, so let's do it as the outro. My name's Joe. And I'm Stephanie. This is Not Every Single. Thanks for watching. Bye.